We live in a world so fake that, funnily speaking, the truth scares people. Now, there is still this point, or this concept, let's call it this way. There is this context, concept, whatever you want to call it, and it's called the truth. Now, the question that comes in mind is, what is this truth? Because, you know, there is something called a universal truth, and there is also something called a personal truth. And which of these two are necessarily the right ones? If we are to stay and look back in history, in many situations, the truth has been that which has served a certain group of people or, you know, a smaller or wider group of people. Because ultimately, people have been living in ignorance for thousands of years, so this means they will live in impulsive behavior. Automatically speaking, everything that suits them is good and everything that doesn't suit them is bad. Adding to also to this the amount of suffering that they have stored in the current and previous lives, as well as traumas they've been through in those lives, because, well, medieval times, one can say they've definitely been traumatic one way or another. Well, point be said, those people would act, you know, in more or less horrendous ways. So, if one is simply set on, you know, a destruct destructive path of reaching something, then you know, the impulses can go to even, you know, calling others as instant enemies because, well, they want something and as it always goes, it doesn't matter how reality really is, it's very important to know how reality is in the people's minds because someone, if they end up thinking that you're their enemy, even if you don't know them, well, you may end up, you know, with something bad done against you. Now, again, this is, well, more or less something good or bad, but, well, you know, to everyone, the truth can end up as, you know, being something subjective. Now, what do I mean? Well, subjectiveness is a point of view that always suits the watcher, right? The being, the person. Let's call it the person, because subjectiveness is always aspect, an aspect of the persona, right? And, of course, subjectivity also includes the idea of justification. When you believe something, even if it is a lie, it's still a belief because, well, a belief means accepting something without a necessity for proof. And it's basically always an aspect of ignorance because in ignorance, people accept literally everything. But the point about this is, when people accept literally everything without discernment, well, that's utter, you know, impulsive behavior because they want to escape from the chaos and the pain that is in their life because ultimately living in ignorance means living in slavery, slavery of the mind and obviously in a lot of suffering. So they need distractions and that's why they will end up, you know, pursuing different paths. Usually they will believe the first few ideas that come to their mind, which is why a lot of things like, you know, religions, religious institutions and, you know, these kind of groups have always been very good because fracturing wasn't necessarily intended, but it was a good way. Now, fracturing always occurs basically because of the ego, because once someone does um, identify themselves with a certain idea, state or, well, something, the moment they identify themselves with something, they instantly become, you know, in a way possessive, especially if they live their life impulsively, right? So impulses are their only nature. They will always embrace this idea of aggression, right? Anything that is against their points of view or those ideas that they support is definitely more or less the enemy, right? And in time, fraction has always been, you know, fracturing humanity has always been a good way to keep people, you know, under influences, right? And to keep them busy, because ultimately it's always easy to do so. It's always easy to manipulate people. It's always easy to keep them, you know, one against the other, because ultimately why not, right? So the point about this truth is that, well, there is also 
a so-called subjective truth, but there is also what I call an objective truth. Now, these two in a way aren't much of a different, I can say. The point is, everyone here came to perceive their own truths, because ultimately, each and every one is unique. We may look in a similar way, we may be either female or male as a gender, we may be human as a race, finally speaking, why do we call ourselves a race? Where are we racing towards? So the point is, each and every one of us is unique, because the physical body has its own limited potential to perceive things around itself. Now, the way the physical body is kept, the way the physical body is treated, it can reach higher levels of perception, it can reach, you know, uh, let's say better perception levels. So, through this, a person can easily, um, well, perceive things beyond just the physicality. This is basically an aspect of spirituality. When people start understanding, right? At first, it's an understanding. You still don't know it. It still doesn't make any logical sense, but still, you start acknowledging that there is something beyond you, right? There isn't just that which you physically can perceive. So, everyone can perceive things in a certain way. Now, we all, as humans, see approximately the same, you know, spectrum of light, Right? Some people may see a bit better, but ultimately it's the same uh, light spectrum. Now, the point is, hearing is kind of similar from one to another, because ultimately we hear the same things, right? But, you know, as the body is improved more and more, breath techniques are, you know, better incorporated, and breathing is no longer done unconsciously, eating is no longer done unconsciously, the body can actually start reaching higher levels of development, right? Now, the problem is society is filled with a lot of distractions. Each distraction is technically a lie, because it supports the idea that you're running away from yourself, from who you are, and from the responsibility, first and foremost, because ignorance means running away from responsibility. Education is the opposite, or well, should be, because in our case we're teaching children to be even more ignorant at school. But ultimately, education emanates from educario, right? Which means to, um, let's say, to liberate from ignorance, right? To raise from ignorance. Now, the point is, well, this isn't kind of the case because, well, schools are kind of teaching people to be more and more ignorant and are kind of capitalizing on people's traumas because school takes children to a lot of, you know, little abuses by teachers because teachers have also been abused in their own way. So now they justify this as, you know, their turn to do, uh, you know, to return the favor, right? And kind of gives the impression that they're taking a bit harsh on the children, right? Just like the Pink Floyd example was, right? The t male teacher was, you know, harshly punished and, you know, constantly, you know, dominated by his wife and then he would lash out on the children. It's kind of an example, but, you know, don't generalize it. Now, the truth is, you know, everything that one perceives, right, in terms of uh, spiritual perceptiveness and, well, physicality, everything that one perceives is to be called the truth because ultimately you have experienced it. Now, the point is it's kind of fuzzy to accept things like dreams because dreams are much more complex, but everything that one perceives consciously, that cannot be disregarded as... Uh, a lie, right? You cannot call it a lie. Of course, many people will because, well, if you end up seeing things beyond the physical, you'll probably be called that you have some mental illness and the such. A lot of people are still stuck in this kind of idea. But focusing on ghosts and things beyond the physical ain't necessarily easy task because if you don't have a psychological and, you know, emotional foundation, strong ones though, well, one may end up seeing or perceiving more than they should and, well, they can actually cause some damage. So the point is, there is a personal truth because ultimately that's what each and every one of us is going through. We are perceiving our own truths and ideas and, you know, each and every experience in life kind of 
allows us to, or well, should aim us, you know, towards an idea of liberation, right? Finding out about ourselves, what we have been identifying ourselves with, traumas we have been causing on ourselves, and ultimately the point of liberation is realizing how much of a slaves we are to our own mind. Something that one believes is not necessarily a truth because, well, ultimately anyone can teach you something wrong and you identify with it in case you were not discerning enough, you know, and, well, you can end up believing that. Endlessly, even. Now, the point is, that's kind of your own personal truth, but, you know, it's not necessarily a universal truth. There is something called a universal truth, especially, well, it's kind of wrongly called, because, as of how I see things, a universal thing is something that happens the same in the whole universe. But we only say universal to something that applies to our known physics, right? But we haven't been literally on other planets, right? We have used several devices. We have reached the moon and, you know, Mars maybe. And, well, we cannot deny this after all, even if it's it is all a fake or not, the point is, let's say we have reached there, okay? Let's not forget that the most important thing in our life should be our own improvement, right? The improvement of the capacity of the physical body to reach higher levels of energy and therefore live life in less pain and anguish, right? Whether people have reached Mars and the Moon uh, realistically or not, that shouldn't be a concern because ultimately, if some people lie, let it be on them. Now, the way I see things is, you know, everything in life seems to be kind of a distraction. Science is kind of a distraction because you kind of have to agree to what people say and it's kind of like advertisements every time it pops up in your Google feed, in whatever, Yahoo, and, you know, they kind of have those cringe uh, titles, right, that they have discovered something new, and it's always something that, you know, it's like, it really, really, really wants to pull your attention from you. So, a personal truth is anything that you experience through any one of your senses, and preferably, especially, better said, when you are fully conscious and aware, which is something that most people aren't, because it's much easier to live in the comfort zone of the unconscious mind. A universal truth is, well, what we call something that always respects the laws of the physics that we know. Now, as I perceive things, things function in a certain way on this planet and our own planet, but they might function differently on Mars and any other planet, right? Once a planet has a difference, you know, a different gravitational force, right, a different gravitational pull, it's obvious that the whole physics of the planet will be slight, at least slightly different. Once you have slightly different physics, things will most likely function in a different way. Then, obviously, the chemistry of the planets also most likely may have slight changes. Now, all of these may be very similar to the physics we know in this solar system, because this solar system has the sun in the center, and it does have its own influences on each and every one of the... Um, planets, right? And it is a blue star. It emits blue light, which also has its own influence on the planets. Another star, still emitting blue light, maybe, maybe bigger or smaller than the sun, but definitely it has its own gravitational influence. So, which with each and any of these, you know, physical forces, there may be a lot of influences induced, considering that there are billions of stars in this galaxy and billions of galaxies in the whole universe, well, most likely we cannot say that, you know, the physics that we know are necessarily the same, right? It's just some accepted truths that, you know, in lack of anything, you know, more concise, people end up believing these, what I call the silly truths, right? You don't have something better, so you accept something. Now, the universal truth is, well, on our planet, there are truths that you simply cannot, you know, deny. I mean, water boils at 100 degrees and freezes at 0 degrees, and there are those other little truths. Now, when it comes to the human side, right, the truth is always in this world, because we live in a world so fake that, you know, the idea of the truth always scares a lot of people, 
In this world, socially speaking and, you know, psychologically speaking, the point is, the truth will always be that which suits the ego of, you know, the biggest slaves of their own mind. Because those people who are the slaves of their own mind will always use anything as a justification for their bad deeds. Because misery loves company, right? So many people want to harm the planet, they are against humanity, they hate their neighbors, right? Because they are slaves of their own mind and they live impulsively, right? And we have created all of these little truths that we seem to follow aimlessly, right? Like, um, what were those? Oh yes, like demons and angels and the such, you know? These are what I see as, again, little lies, right? Because... People cannot hold themselves from doing certain things because they live impulsively, right? So they need justifications. When they hurt someone, they use the justification that they were, uh, you know, possessed or afflicted by a demon, right? But even the Bible says, don't, you know, uh, don't blame the demon. They're just playing their role, right? They're just tempting you. You're the one who's doing the things. But now it's almost common, commonly affected, right? That well, if something bad happens to you, it's always a demon, right? Or it's always uh, one's ego, right? We've always, we've always been on this lookout for the next victim, right? And then we also have God, right? Because if something doesn't go your own way, it's the will of God, right? It's God's fault that things don't go your own way. If someone uh, does you something bad, again, why does fate or God play against you, right? So it's all these, you know, the only truth that people accept apparently is that they are some kind of victim to circumstances. Now, this is kind of a truth if you stay and think about it, because when you live impulsively, you'll always be, you know, a slave of... Uh... As I was saying, I was interrupted accidentally by a call. It wasn't necessarily something important, but okay. So the point about the truth, as I was saying, I kind of forgot the idea. But ultimately, there are truths that belong to each and every one individual. Now, when it comes to perception of the truth, the truth will always be, you know, if people live impulsively, the truth will always be that which suits their own impulses, right? Because, well, everyone does things. And the way, if you look closely at society, society works very well on a very narcissistic and sociopathic principle. Because I said so, because I can, right? And if you look at it, that's kind of what society is like. If you look very carefully, you will see that there are the people who give commands and there are the people who gladly accept, right? Because I said so, and people automatically behave because, you know, in running away from responsibility, people automatically end up expecting others to do things for them. That is why we still have a lot of people who expect, you know, the president, governments, you know, authorities to do the work for them, but ultimately no one is willing to do the work themselves. Because, basically, we're all part of society, not those parts of society only, right? And, well, humans should start thinking whether, you know, the people who are in charge, right? The people who rule the country actually have their interest or not at hand. So, the truth always comes in, uh, you know kind of repression because ultimately what is the real truth only belongs to you know some corners right because who would want the real truth to be popped out if this world is so fake that the truth will always scare people that is why people end up with so many distractions because they wouldn't want to accept the fact that you know life is a ruin they are conscious more or less of that but it's much easier to you know sit in the comfort zone. As I, as I was saying in another video, the mind provides a lot of comfort to those who feed it the most. The more you feed your mind with ideas, the more material you have for your justifications. And that usually ends up as being exploiting material. Because you'll use justifications always to lie. Justifications aren't needed for the truth, they're only needed to lie and to support lies. So when it comes to the truth, the truth usually is, at first, it is run away from because, well, people who embrace lies and a shallow existence, they can't accept the truth because it's always much deeper than they can ever accept. Not necessarily perceive, accept. So keeping this in mind, the point is very simple. 
the truth usually will be, you know, laughed at initially, right? Because, well, people have to be molded, right? You have to mold people to serve your own point. So the truth, you, the truth, you know, that which scares people will be molded in a certain way that goes something like a joke, right? It is turned into a joke. It is made fun of. You know, people are discredited. And, you know, even scientists, they are discredited. And, well, on the behind, right, you know, uh, there where, you know, the masses cannot see, you know, such scientists are, you know, kicked out because they're saying things that some people's interests will suffer. So such people are not ever going to be accepted because society in the first place doesn't doesn't accept people who have discernment because when you have discernment you're capable of thinking for your own self and that's kind of a capital sin in this society so after the truth has been you know mocked at which usually mockery goes very well with impulsive people because impulsive people want you know they want misery right misery wants company so if someone wants to tell the truth and they are mocked at by authority right everyone will mock them because you know the little ones the followers are always bitch dogs you know those little dogs that always do what the big dogs do right and then after that right when enough time has passed depending on people's interests then there is the so-called repression right the truth will always be repressed you know, brutally repressed, murders, you know, all sorts of things. And after a very long time, usually when the regime collapses or that which supports the lies collapses, then, it, you know, the biggest blow to those who fought for that truth is delivered through the masses usually because the truth is then accepted as, you know, something well, it's something common, right? It's like, it is generally accepted, right? This is a full disregard of the, uh, you know, those who fought for the truth, right? And it's also a way that, you know, a very perverse way through which those who fought against the truth now kind of admit defeat, right? And they always come with those pompous aspects that, you know, they thought they believed something and now, you know, the new truth is, you know, the universal truth now and, you know, uh, things are indeed like that and, you know, they will always use all the cover-ups, right? Scientists are showing that indeed things are like this, right? And, you know, these is like they're erasing even more from people's awareness the idea that the truth was ever fought against, right? So the point is, uh, it's a way that, you know, they aggressively forgive themselves, right? It's not that you forgive themselves for having been taught a lie. No, 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 no. They teach you that, hey, you know, this has always been accepted, actually. It's all in your mind, right? Gaslighting. Because gaslighting is a narcissistic aspect, and I said society is very stinky when it comes to, you know, narcissistic specifications. So hopefully this video was a bit enlightening on this idea of the truth. Remember that, you know, you are here to feel your own truths, but the point is no one should be imposing their own truths upon others because the truth does not need imposing, right? The truth is just like the sun. It is out there. Even the blind people can perceive the sun because they may not see physically, but other senses within them are greatly amplified. So when the sun is on the sky, blind people, if they have a certain level of, you know, perception, they can feel that the sun is up in the sky because, well, it influences literally everything, right? So the truth is always there. You don't have to, you know, do anything, right? There is no effort in perceiving the truth, but there is always effort in the lie because the lie requires a lot of energy, a lot of effort, you know, to conceive and especially to preserve, right? And there's always a lot of justifications and people to, you know, call into and the such. But, well, hopefully this was a bit, you know... Um, Hopefully this video served people's imagination and discernment. Hopefully this was a bit eye-opening as usual. I know I kind of beat the bush around the subject, but the point is I want to create a foundation always before, you know, delivering the point. So all this being said, you are appreciated. Keep becoming introspective and you'll see that many of the truths that you are seeking for, they are just right there within you. We are here to perceive our own truths and, well, 
accept other people's ideas, but not necessarily blindly. All this being said, God appreciate it. Take care. Ferengian Board signing out.